Hello, it is I, Sir Devon of Kang Productions, and welcome back to another video. Now, this is a little mini-series that I'm doing called Breaking Down Welcome to Dystopia. So, I'm going to have a series of this coming out. And we have three issues to cover. So, for those who don't know, the original idea for Welcome to Dystopia was going to be very different. It was going to be about a group of teenagers who I even I still have some of the original scripts as well on my OneNote and I originally completed six episodes so we were going to have a lot of all these characters and it was going to be a mix of cyberpunk and steampunk in the modern world but I wanted to make it a superhero type series, which was, wasn't was following the message or, or politics or identity politics for that matter. And these few shows really, these three issues, are what started it all. And so I'm going to commentate through the first few issues, point out uh, some behind the scenes stuff, uh, some facts as well. So point out some Easter eggs. And production is very slow for the uh, show. So be warned about that. So without further ado, let's begin. So, this character is called Prove Carson. He is based on, named after Carson from Downton Abbey. And is that, so that's Jeron Hawk. He's named after Bergstein Hawk from Mass Effect. And a loyalty mission. And I loved filming this Take Over the Earth scene. It's kind of a prologue. I, I wanted to do that effect. Originally, that was going to be a deleted scene, but it, I deemed it too inappropriate. And those figures are actually Mandalorians. Now, that green screenshot is from Halo, the Master Chief Collection. I've not played it in years. And just to clarify, this does take in the set place in the same universe as Riverdale. As you're going to hear now. I wanted to portray Jeron Hawk as this Hiram Lodge-like figure, where he's he seems like a nice guy, but really he's a liar. I know I don't want to call him a carbon copy of Hiram Lodge. And this is his speech scene. That's a shot from the Mass Effect Two loading screens. I think they're my favourite. I did the 316 as a Steve Austin reference. Oh my god, that was when I put sound effects in my comics. So basically, this is the US election. Ah, uh, that's my awful Lego house set. That is... I Actually, in this, I use a lot of Lego sets that I already own. You can see how it's very different from the original idea. So Jeron Hawks in his a uh, Jeron Hawk. Prove is in his early twenties and still lives with his parents due to Jeron Hawk destroying everything. You can see the vengeance in his eyes. Now that armor is the first order stormtrooper replaced with other parts. With uh, Ninjago swords. I'm actually proud of that minifigure. And that was made by Archie Andrews. Or Archie Andrews' corporation. Now Shelby is named after the actress Shelby Bain. Who was known for the next step. I tried to base some of the action sequences on video games. So this one's kind of based on Mass Effect and Transformers War for Cybertron. 
if you remember when you used to press a button to make a move i love that um rail gun i have no idea where that final piece of the rail gun came from I was actually going to have a minifigure head in there, but that would be too gory. Leaving an EMP. Again, the... Now, there's a bit of confusion throughout the series of gunships. Because they change their appearances. That's because each gunship is different or handle different situations. So that was just a normal thing. And then we have the alleyway scene. Ah, oh, now this is, would have been the library. That set breaks all the time. I've had to remodel it and reshape it because it's broken. I think you'll probably notice. Ah, James. And this is where he gets his name. I love that shot. Crimson Archangel. Now we're on issue two with Karak. Of course, you assume snipe position. So as I was explaining, uh, the gunships are all throughout different scenarios. So... Helicopters deal with more lower buildings and hover cars or hover gunships deal with the high rise stuff. I know helicopters can go up to that kind of way, but they're better at dispersing troops. I actually used a Darth Vader holographic panel thing. Ah, uh, the Lego City motorcycle. That's the fire motorcycle. In this, we expose parts of the trading thing. We explore parts of the trading, the vehicle trade that goes on in this world because Jeron Hawk uh, disabled all the trading companies. The lore is just explained throughout this episode. Now, in here, I had to convert all my Transformers figures into cars, into their alternate units. And that was a Sabrina reference there, for those who don't know. I wrote this at the time I was watching... Actually, I didn't watch a Riverdale anymore at that point because I got bored of it. See why they call him Max Man. That's actually from Hagrid's hut, which the base set was made from, converted from. And later on, I've yet to film any of this, but you're going to see some on the Hogwarts Express. But that's for another episode. And then the duel. I try to make the dueling system similar to the Force Unleashed style of doing things. <laughs> Poor Bumblebee. Yeah, you can see bits of Wheeljacker sticking out. And that's Mirage from Dark of the Moon. I've had that Wheeljack figure for years. And that Bumblebee was from Dark of the Moon. Like the original toy line. Yeah, that was when I was an experience with speech bubbles. When I learned with the animation studio, you have to swap the speech bubbles around. You know, it goes in an irrelevant place. You can see that he's getting a bit more threatening in this. Of 
there's a bit of a continuity error here in the last episode because it said 2055 even though that was set in a different time Uh, yeah. Unless Shelby malfunctioned a bit at first. Ah, uh, Normandy Street Mass Effect reference. I love... Now, this is going to hit home for him, literally. I wanted to really have him have it hit home for thingy. You can see I made lighting adjustments by shutting the curtains... Oh, the sniper rally scenes. I kind of enjoyed this, but the problem was that was only one window. Whereas for this, I had to make it look as though he was shooting up snipers from a distance. That was my thing to replicate the function from Transformers War for Cybertron. When the sniper beams focused on you while you were running. <laughs> my god, good times. <laughs> Poor sniper. This was before I had the room redecorated. Oh, vehicle chase scene. I took some inspiration from Need for Speed for this bit. Uh, Hot Pursuit was my favourite game. Because of the soundtrack. I don't mind Most Wanted. Most Wanted was a bit of an improvement. Bearing in mind... There we go, the car explosion. Bearing in mind, Hot Pursuit was on the Wii. Now we're leading into the third episode, where we talk about the mercenaries. I kind of think some of the things went too quickly in this, in the first few issues. Which is hard for everyone to keep up with. And that shot, by the way, is from Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And I made it to look like a window. For Prove's outfit, I decided to make it both modern and smart at the same time. That's kind of my style as well. Oh my god, I didn't know how to spell back then. I think Prove is a really hard-hitting and intense character at times. Which is kind of what we need in characters, you know, for them to not put up with any trouble. You know, to be quite forceful. Kind of like Crosshair's character in The Bad Batch. <laughs> Look at that intensity. I made a stop motion comic because of this Star Wars YouTuber, Nicholas Demoldi, I think. He does he's done Star Wars uh animations. Really good YouTuber, really good writer. In fact, some of the best Star Wars content I've seen on the internet. And that's what inspired me to get back into this, because he always put speech bubbles, which was a good way for the characters to communicate, instead of someone speaking over it. So do check him out. There we go, now we explain the mercenary groups. So I wanted to make it a mercenary system like Mass Effect. You're going to see more of those commanders in the next issue. And I wanted to make the mercenaries intense, like there was no going back. 
like a true soldier. Now we're talking about the Black Shadow. Zora District. Tally Zora reference. You can see how Mass Effect has provided inspiration for this series. And DU Sex. I was experimenting with Shelby uh, speech bubbles at the time and all the fonts that I wanted to use. Oh my god, you can see the DU Sex Mankind Divided shot peeking out. Oh, this is when James does a scam call. As if by magic they teleport. Uh, I wanted to make a, like a real phone conversation on Prove's end. I wanted to make it as though Jeron Hawk and the mercenaries are kind of a. I love how James wants to order takeaway. Well, Prove's just like no, but as I was saying. Um. Oh, I put a time frame there. Ah, uh, here comes the mercenaries. I wanted to make it as though Jeron Hawk's guys and the Mercs. Or on you don't mess with us, we don't mess with you terms. I I use clone armor for the mercenaries. They're originally gonna be Jeron Hawk soldiers, but I thought no. Originally they were gonna be called Hawkman. I know, do you think the word Hawkman sounds ridiculous? Say in the comments. Or do you think I should use it? Because I do take feedback and I will make changes if you want. James being diplomatic there. Some of these episodes actually didn't don't make any sense at all. That's the back of a set for the 8th Doctor's TARDIS, which I've used in animations that I won't air on YouTube. That's actually the side of this desk for the elevator. Uh, here we are in the Merc space, and there's Arnold. He's basically a weapons enthusiast. I had to make that set very quickly on the day I filmed it. I know it's not a good way to work. I might improve on that. I love how he just surrounds the armor and goes like, mm, yep, yep, this this model's good, yep, it has this. Look at that intense close-up. He's not going to take his helmet off. That will be revealed in the next episode we cover. Then he lets go of, of all his weapons. Uh, yeah. Kind of like the thing in the Mandalorian where he doesn't take off his helmet because of his honour. Because it's part of the Mandalorian code to not take off your helmet. And actually the reason I made the soldiers in this silent is because I wanted them to look menacing and look like they're, hu they're no longer humans. Uh, and then he throws a flashbang. Strobe lighting effect there. So that was the end of the breakdown for this comic. Uh, the first three issues, that is. There will be more of this coming soon. 
And I, I realised in the beginning I made a few continuity errors. And I needed to improve on that. And I will, rest assured, make a few adjustments to the script. So, yeah. Filmmaking wise, I, I enjoyed making it. I love making it with Lego figures because the thing with Lego is... I know they're not as flexible, but you can use anything as a base. So, like, you can use a cardboard box or a storage box as a kind of an alleyway. And you can use whatever you like. So, this series is more of a behind-the-scenes... I think on things behind the scenes perspective and I, I I hope you enjoy it when I'll upload it after I upload the welcome to dystopia episode and it takes a really long time to actually make the episode and edit it I really should get knuckled down and concentrate on it more but these things do take time um, but when it does drop please do watch it. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. So goodbye and good night.